And what did you feel when you first realised that moment that Breaking Bad was Breaking Bad, that people had that reaction to it? Well, I felt it, it was great. Uh, it was sort of my third rise to fame. Uh, so I, I and the, but the first thing that I felt was that I'm I'm finally uh, able to sort of deal with it and position it in my life as it should be. Uh, it feels I'm very comfortable in my own skin and I'm comfortable with people. It's finding that space that is out of the ego space that allows you just to, to be you. Sometimes it makes me laugh and it's quite funny and other times I'm thinking, wow, how crazy is this that people don't even really know my name? And then I get a little angry behind that, that Gus is more famous than I am. <laughs> it's such a great thing. You know, I mean, here's the guy who created every motion, every part of this character, yet people know his name and don't know mine. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you know you can't win for losing, you know. <laughs> so uh, so I, I it, it reminds me to be madly in love with the work and the work only, and then I come here to give back to the fans who so want to have that personal experience. It's nice. Absolutely. I'm sure they really appreciate it, and I know they have done. You've been queues around the block today to see you. You talked about you know you obviously being the man behind the creation of Gus Spring. How did you go about getting under the skin of that character and creating him to be the character that we all loved to watch on that show? Well, I should really correct myself. I can't take full and complete responsibility because the character was written. Vince uh, Gilligan wrote a character who was basically a glorified waiter, and that's all he knew. He knew one thing that he wrote that was so profound for me that was my clue was hiding in plain sight. And when I started to think about that, there was one episode of Gus written and, and a template for a second where he would be involved in it. But that, those words, hiding in plain sight, made me really think and inspired me. And when I was asked to come back for a second episode, uh, I should also say I was a waiter in my life. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to wait on people. Uh, in many ways, the fans today wait on me. They want my autograph. But when I'm waiting on people, I'm showing my best face. I'm showing that best side of myself so I can um, you know, get a good tip, so I can keep my job. Uh, all those things that I may not be feeling in the moment when I'm asking them, uh, is everything to your satisfaction? <laughs> Would you like a refill? You know, I may not really feel like that. And when I started to think about Gus and this guy, I, I thought this is my route in to really thinking about someone that we all might know who is doing something quite different than what he is projecting, what he's putting forth. And that was the key for me. And that was the beginning. That was the beginning of a, a plethora of ideas that allowed me to really be a citizen of our society, someone who gives to the fun run, someone who you know, gives at the hospital, but someone who's hiding something. Uh, and he's yet a businessman. He's hiding something. And I thought, how many people do we know in our lives who are hiding something? Definitely. Very scary, isn't it? I mean, you mentioned, of course, Vince Gilligan there, who created the show. I mean, how much, how much input did you get as the show went on into that character of Gus? Well, this is the way I like to put it. I was so inspired by the writing of Vince and his writers and the one line, Hiding in Plain Sight, that I brought forth what I wanted to give it in those, the very first episode. Before I got off the plane... Uh, as the plane was landing, my phone was ringing saying, would you come back? So what I did inspired Vince. And I like to look at it that way because then he was inspired to write more and deepen things. And then we had a conversation. And I was able to tell him that I wanted to be a part of a filmmaking family, but I felt that this character was quintessential not only to his show, uh, but also to the way we look at people who are around us in life. And I wanted to create a gentleman who was very meticulous and very methodical, but yet was more of an observer. But yet underneath it all, he wanted to help people become their best selves. Why would anyone cultivate chemists directly, uh, put them through college and make an agreement for them to cook for him? He's very meticulous and wanted the highest quality of the product he was about to produce. Very few people are like that. We mass produce things, we, we throw crap against the wall, we hope it sticks, and we hope that our ideas will make a million when they're half-baked. This guy thinks things out, and it was a really great, great way to look at um, how we follow through in terms of what we want for our success in life. And I thought people would really be interested in what I had to lend to this character. And of course you're working with another character in the show who's also perfectionist, isn't he? Um, Brian Cranston's character, Heisenberg, as his pseudonym is. I mean, he's a perfectionist because he wants to get that as pure as possible as well, doesn't he? I mean, what was it like working with him as an actor? 
I love Brian. I think um, when I work with Brian, I think of a master actor. And I think we make great music together. And, and I know that that's what uh, Vince and the producers at AMC saw. Uh, we had fireworks together. Uh, you know, there's, there's two ways to do it. Actors who are with actors who are as strong as they are uh, sometimes fight and vie for position so that they're trying to one-up each other. There are the actors who feel that they may be weaker than their scene partner, so then they shrink. And there are actors who just stay in the moment and don't lose their footing. And that's who Brian is. He, didn't, he knew who he was as Walter White. I knew what I was trying to create as Gustavo Fring. There was no issue for me to try to top him or him to top me. We just knew our ground and we made music, and that's when the music is the best. So I adore him as an actor and as a human being, and I feel like the music we made together was some of the sweetest music I've ever made with any scene partner ever. Oh, that's fantastic, we certainly enjoyed watching it. I mean, it was a shame that the show ever had to come to an end, but it was great that it went out on such a high, I think. And of course now we've had news that there's gonna be a prequel with Better Call Saul. I mean, what did you think when you heard about that? I was jealous, I mean, what did I think? <laughs> Because then I heard months later that it was either uh, the Better Call Saul or it was the rise of Gus. And because Vince had already fleshed out with Bob, who I adore, another great human being, great actor, great comic, Odenkirk, that they had already talked about um, doing a spinoff for Saul because that would be fun, you know. Uh, and so, yeah, the first reaction was, well, shit, <laughs> you know, or shite. <laughs> Why, why not me? Uh, but, you know, I believe now that there's nothing that's for you. If it's for you, it'll be for you. Uh, however, Vince, did, they did come to me and say, would you make an appearance? And part of me says that I would love to, but I don't want to dilute what I've already done as Gus. If Gus is dead and gone, let him be gone, because he will be legendary and be known uh, far beyond my days. You'll know Gus Gustavo Fring. However, I do think that there is room for me, if I were to appear on Saul, I would love for it to be more than one episode, maybe a couple of episodes, and then to spin it off into the rise of Gus for a limited 13 episodes. So um, I've um, sort of put it out there, put it out there with you guys and put it out there with Vince that that might be something for, that I would be really interested in pursuing because, because of the fans, so many people, and because I feel like there is a background of Gus that I have not been able to show and would love to be able to portray. I mean, if you could do that, and we, God, we would love to see you do that. Um, what would you like to happen for Gus? What would you like that rise to involve? I would like for us to see the part of him in Chile that we don't know. Um, the part of his dedication to the young chemist. We saw a piece of it with Max. The part of his dedication to, to his family. Uh, I have a great sense that Gus is from an untouchable family and that he went the wrong way. So I'd love to see how he dealt with his family, how he disposed of them or allowed them to see him in this new light. Uh, in a way, it's, you know, the, the Osama bin Laden story, you know, the rogue son who went away and, and the, all the, the stuff that went on with Osama, with it, you know, he supposedly was addicted to drugs. He supposedly went against a very rich family and had his own ideas. This is partly Gustavo as well. Gustavo just turned out to be a gentleman. <laughs> you know? So I would love to see how that all took place. It would be quite amazing. And I think he had ties to the military. I think, you know, revenge ever, uh, ev uh, ev eventually, revenge was his undoing. Uh, but I think all these things, you know, lend to the makeup of the man. I know he was married and had children. You know, which we didn't show on the show. There was all this, you know, uh, people talking about was he gay? Was there a relationship with Max? But I happen to believe that Gus was a very upstanding family man and knew how to raise children. We saw none of that. You know, you saw it in Walter's life. I would love to be able to capture some of it in Gus's life and to see the brutality that went into the making of this extremely calm, fastidious, and graceful gentleman. I mean, if you could have any actors or actresses in that show, because let's make that happen, um, who would you like to be uh, acting within it? I don't know. Certainly to begin, it would be great to see Bob. Uh, and I have no idea about anyone else at present, to be honest with you. You've thrown me for a little bit of a loop. Uh, I would want actors who are deeply rooted in, in establishing character and committed to great writing uh, would be all I would ask for. Uh, but I think there'd be... Uh, some a, a, a wide variety of choices uh, to be a part of that that I would I would love to 
sure people will be clamouring to be part of it. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, Revolution. I mean, it's another show that we've really enjoyed, and we're very sad to see that it hasn't. It's not going to be continuing. I mean, what did you feel when you when you heard that news? Well, I was saddened. You know, uh, I do feel like many parts of Revolution had so much potential, and I feel uh, really great about Eric Kripke, who created the show, and J.J. Abrams, who, who co-produced the show. Uh, I was saddened because I, I feel like th that I was really moving toward the the continuation of creating such a great character uh, in Tom Neville. I mean, a, a guy who really came from nothing and was beaten down and learned to be a survivor and learned to be a killer and a leader. Very complicated human being, and I had more to, to, to say in that regard. Um, I, I do... I do think that an ensemble show and a network show has to have so many elements that please so many different people across the board that it's much more difficult to be more fine-tuned about things. And to be broad is to, to have to have a little comedy and have to have some science and all these things, which is a lot to get into 42 minutes of television. Uh, so um, they, we did our best and I think we did a great job. I certainly feel like I, in a way, with many of the shows I've done lately I've sort of dodged the bullet. I've been a part of one of the best shows ever on television and then in creating Revolution I had such a great storyline with Kim Raver who was over in London doing 24. I mean we had sparks between us you know the, you know I was able to do you know ride a horse and be that action hero of, of, of some note um, and I feel like it's all practice for the big ones so I think there's still yet another role that might be uh, have some of the elements of Tom Neville. I don't think I'm running out of ideas. I think Tom was a just a loose cannon uh, but so passionate and did all of his own dirty work made him very different than Gus but I have more to offer in, in that arena I, I don't know if I could ever go back and do a you know I, I think I'll wait till later years to play a lawyer and be in a procedural show because I've had so much fun with revolution I mean you know look I ride and and, and I always liked all the cowboys when we were shooting down in, in Austin and shooting down in uh, Wilmington beforehand would you know I'd walk up to the horse and I would let him smell me and I'd touch the horse's head and I'd stand there and just rub the horse and they look at me and they go do you ride you know because these guys are hardcore and I say yeah I ride a little bit I can still learn some things and I get on the horse and they would look at me and I'd control the horse very gently and they go oh oh you're good and I go, well, I'm not as good as you are, but I can handle the horse, you know. So I love that stuff. And to be, you know, look, I am an outdoors guy who loves to act. I ski, I ride motorcycles, I cycle. So to be on a show like Revolution where I'm outside 10 hours a day doing my work is, um, is a blessing. And I hope that maybe another network will pick it up. And if not, I'll have the opportunity to do something like that again. Yeah, we hope so too, either or both of those. I mean, you mentioned J.J. Abrams, though, of course, is behind uh, his company Bad Robots. It was on producers of Revolution. And of course, he's doing Star Wars Episode 7, which has just started shooting. I mean, what did you think when you heard the news that he was on board for that? And why do you think he'll be a great director of that series? Well, I think JJ is a very astute director with new ideas. I think he's been trained by the best and has surrounded himself with the best to work with. His company, Bad Robot, is absolutely amazing in terms of people are really human there. So, you know, that comes from the top. And uh, I like that a lot. When you see a showrunner who's folks who work for them are happy, that means he's doing something right. He is the fearless leader who has compassion and kindness and grace. So when I first heard he was doing Star Wars, my first thought, I'm an actor, so I think of myself. <laughs> you know, can I be in it? What's in it for me? And uh, so I did mention it to JJ, and he said, oh, that'd be interesting. There might be something interesting there. Uh, but I haven't gotten the call, and that is okay. Uh, I still adore him, and I love what he does, and I think he is the perfect person to take over that franchise, and will make it work, and make it exciting, and do something different you know we you know we have to stir the pot and when you're doing something that's been done so many times before you want to have someone who has new ideas and can enhance um, and and do something new with what we've already seen is a real talent Definitely. I mean it's great to see him mixing up things as you say and bringing in new young people like brilliant British actor called John Boyega um, you know Adam Driver of course from Girls um, Andy Serkis is in there as well as well as the people who we know from that world originally like um, Harrison Ford and, and Carrie Fisher too. I think it's brilliant the way he's mixed it up. I really loved that I just missed him in Dubai. I was there for a signing and he was there looking for locations. Then I had just missed him in London and I loved that he was seeing actors from all over the world because this is um, where our world is coming. We're a, a melting pot of people who understand each other from across the sea and otherwise. And I think it's brilliant of him to be targeting a world market uh, with his creativity. He so deserves to be successful. 
now. You said that you would have loved to have been in episode seven, but there's still two more to come. There's episode eight and nine as well. So would you like to be in Star Wars? And if you could be in Star Wars, what kind of character would you like to be? Well, I'd like to play a leader. You know, I would really like to play a leader who knows what he's doing but has some vulnerability underneath it. So, yeah, I put it out there that, that you know, the, the, the eight and nine would be absolutely wonderful for me to be in. I know there was a military officer in seven, probably a smaller part, but I'm ready for the big, huge ones. And I would only want to work with J.J. in, in, in that regard. So, um, hey, J.J., I'm here still, and I love you. <laughs> and, of course, there's also Star Trek, which the third one, um, J.J. is not directing, but um, Roberto also, he who's the writer of the other ones, is. Um, would you be up for a role in Star Trek? Yeah, you know, I like the sci-fi world. It's a, a world that is now coming into its own. All It's being recreated all over again. And I think it's important to have some very, very good actors who can deal with the technological advances that we have in film. Many times you're acting with nobody there. And years ago I did a film with Francis Ford Coppola. It was called Cotton Club. And, you know, we acted with green screen. And there was no furniture. And we had to just sort of, you know, it's, it's really that pantomime play of that children play uh, and that is so uh, reminiscent of what we m do in movies today. And uh, I love the technology of film and I'd love to be involved in something like that again. Again. What would you like to say to the fans out there of yours that are watching this video right now? You know, I really like to say thank you for supporting me. You know, I come to these Comic Cons because I think that the fans who are so loyal to me, I'd love to be able to give them something, uh, a piece of myself, back to them. And uh, and so all those Breaking Bad fans who expect me to be like that all the time, they, they are always surprised when they see this great smile. I want to let them know who I am and how much I love them for supporting me and I love what I do. So I believe that what you think grows. What you think and hear uh, grows and it grows in a way that if you do something every day, if you do something today to determine your tomorrow, it'll come true. Uh, because that's what dreams are. Dreams are thoughts that are worked on and put into the universe and practiced and believed in and then they can come true. And uh, I certainly have had my dream come true because I don't work a day in my life because I love what I do. Oh, what a beautiful point to finish on. Thank you so much for speaking to us today. Pleasure, Jan. Thank you for having me.